Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Contemporary Living with Farmer and Hill. I am one of your hosts, Andre Hill, and I will I, th I would like to thank everyone for tuning in to 15 Minutes with God. Um, I came up with this concept. Me and my wife was talking, and you know, my wife loves when I teach the Word of God. So what I decided to do was I came up with this idea. I'm just sitting one day. I said, you know what? I'm just do a 15 minute segment every Sunday called 15 Minutes with God. And hopes that when people are getting ready for church or you cleaning the house or you're making breakfast for the husband or you just up getting the kids ready for whatever y'all got planned for the day, that you can listen to this message and be inspired by the word of God. To be inspired to get up and do something to help someone, to be a blessing to others, maybe in your family or in your communities or perhaps people you don't know. So this morning I'm going to talk very briefly for 15 minutes about being 15 minutes with God. So uh, sit back, relax, and I really hope you enjoy this show that we're going to be bringing to you every Sunday at 9 o'clock. Also, please make sure that you tune into our show, Contemporary Living with Farm and Hill, if you're in the Chicagoland area. We come on every Thursday night at 9 p.m. Central Standard Time. But if you don't have Comcast and you're not in the Chicago area, you can also can find us here on YouTube. So we appreciate everyone for tuning in. Please make sure that you subscribe to this video. Once we get 100 videos, then uh, 100 subscribers, I'm sorry, once we get 100 subscribers, then I can go live with some of these messages. So we're going to get right into it. So the, the lesson today is we're going to be talking about 15 minutes with God. And hold on here, just get this computer up and running. Technical difficulties. Oh, there we go. There we go. So today we're going to be talking about prayer life and having a relationship with God. That's what I'm going to talk about today. Prayer life, your prayer life, and having and, ha and having, sorry, a relationship with God. So the Bible tells us in 2 Timothy 2:15, study to show that yourself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightfully dividing the word of truth. Once again, I want to want you just to think about this. It says, study to show yourself approved to God, a workman that needs not to be ashamed, rightfully dividing the word of truth. So I like how it says study. Now, it didn't, it didn't say read or just skim through. It says study. So normally when you're studying, you're getting into the details, you're examining everything, you're doing some cross-references and stuff like that. So that's why the Bible says study to show thyself approved unto God. And then it goes on to say rightfully dividing the word of truth. And you got to understand, you got to, you have to divide truth from truth. And what do I mean about dividing truth from truth? Understanding that the Bible tells a story. And the Bible gives a progressive revelation all the way from Genesis to Revelation. So if you, and you know, you ever hear people say, well, the Bible say you can't eat this. Then you, then you have those that say, well, you can eat this. And then people go back and forth of what you can eat and what you can't eat. Well, these are individuals that have failed to rightfully dividing the word of truth. So that's why the Bible tells us to rightfully divide the word of truth. So making sure that you rightfully divide the word of truth is very important because it, it becomes important, especially when you're studying the word of God. You ever watched a movie and you was watching the movie and the movie was getting good and then your phone rang or you forgot you had some food in the oven, then you ran upstairs and when you got back downstairs, you realized that the movie is about over. So you gotta go back, rewind the movie back, and then find out what you missed out on. And so is it with the Bible. You just can't stop at Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John and think you have a full revelation and understanding of the Bible. So that's why the Bible tells us to study, to show ourselves approved unto God, but not only that, to rightfully divide the word of truth. Okay? So when you understand it also, that when you're reading the Bible, that words matter. And you want to keep things in its proper context, okay? And it's important that you keep things in its proper context because that helps you understand the word of God. For example, you see on the screen, I have the word block. Now the word block means an obstacle to the normal pro to the normal progress or function of something. That's what the word block means. All right, so in the example I gave, you see a, a vehicle is blocking somebody's driveway. All right, but the word block can also mean another thing. Let's look at our next definition. Block, a large solid piece of hard material, especially rock, stone, or wood, typically with flat surfaces on each side. So once again, we see we have 
two words that are spelled the same, but have two different meanings. So that's why when you're understanding the, and when you're reading the Bible, you must understand that words matter and you got you have to keep the words in the proper context in order to understand the word of God. You know, a lot of times you hear people say, well, you know, the Bible's hard to understand. And I can't read it and things like that. Well, that's why it's important that we make sure that we study the word of God, not just read the word of God. Yeah, we may go to church and the pastor may teach us the word and things like that, which is fine. But when it's all said and done, you want to make sure that you go back and you study the word of God for yourself. And if you have any questions, you need to be able to relate that to your leader, whoever that may be, and hopefully they can answer your questions. But when it's all said and done, it's your responsibility as a believer to go back and study the word of God for yourself. So when you're studying the word of God, you should be asking yourself a few questions. You should ask yourself six questions. And we always taught this, we was, we was taught this in English. And if you had reading when we was younger, they always had you ask yourself these six questions. So question number one, you want to ask yourself when you're reading the Bible, who? Who was God talking to when he made that statement when you read in the Bible? Because you need that clarity. What? What did God say? You want to know what God said concerning that particular matter when you're reading your Bible. So these are the questions you need to be asking yourself. Who, what, when? When did God make that statement? Who was he talking to? What was, what was God talking about? And when you understand these whys, then you begin to understand the word of God. And all this is important because you're building a relationship with God for yourself, not for nobody else. You want to have that one-on-one -on -one relationship with God that you can be fruitful and that you can go out in the world to be prosperous, not only physically, but spiritually as well. Where? Where did God make the statement? Where was he at when he made the statement? So now you ask, and so now you read the scriptures, you ask them who, what, when, where, and why. Why was the statement made? Why did God say what he said he said? So, and all this is important when you keep the word of God in a proper context. And last but not least, you want to ask yourself how. How did God say he was going to perform the task that was ahead? So when you ask yourself who, what, when, where, and why, you will begin to understand the word of God. Not only the why, but you will also understand when you read the word, the Bible normally tells you the how. How, how God said he was going to do what he said he, he was going to do. All right? So understanding that there, we want to move on to prayer. What is prayer? It's simple. Prayer is simply speaking to God. You as individuals, myself as well, it's important that we build that relationship with God. So not only do we want to study the word of God, but we want to be on our knees. We want to pray to God and get an understanding. We want guidance and directions because we know if we acknowledge God in all our ways, he's going to direct our paths. So no matter what you're going through, what the circumstances are, we want to have a prayer life that's pleasing to God. And I ain't saying you got to pray for 40 minutes or I ain't saying you got to pray for 50 minutes and stuff like that, even if it's just five minutes of your time, even if it's just three minutes of your time. We must, get, we must get on our knees and seek God constantly, each and every day, for guidance, for understanding, for direction, and things like that, all right? So we want to have, I like Daniel. Let's go back and look at one of the Old Testament prophets, Daniel. And I like Daniel because the Bible says in Daniel 6, chapter um, verse 10, Daniel chapter 6, verse 10, now when Daniel knew that the writing was signed, he went into his house, in his windows being open in his chamber toward Jerusalem. He kneeled upon his knees three times a day. So Daniel prayed three times a day. And then he went on to say, and prayed and gave thanks before his God as he did aforetime. So Daniel wasn't only praying before the circumstances came. He was praying after the circumstances and vice versa. See, Daniel had a prayer life. And that's why I said that he did a four times. So it tells you that Daniel prayed before, that, that Daniel was praying ahead of time all the time. So Daniel had a good relationship with God, and he prayed to God three times a day, and it was normal for Daniel. He didn't pray to Daniel because he lost something. And a lot of times we all get caught up in that, even myself. We lose something, and we're going through the storm. That's when we want to pray to God. 
That's when we want to see God. But it's okay to pray to God each and every day when things are going good. We don't only see God when things are going bad, but as a believer, even if things are going good, we should be able to still see God and ask him for guidance and direction and ask him for wisdom and understanding that we are ministers. What is a minister? Not one that has come to serve somebody else, not one, I'm sorry, not one that has come to be served, but as ministers, we are ones that go out to serve, whether it's in our community, whether it's on our job, whether it's our family and friends, or whether it's to a stranger, we are ministers of the gospel. We are here to serve one another. It's not about us. It's about what we can do for him. So when we pray, it shouldn't be about the material things, but it should be, God, what can I do for you today? How can I serve you today? Because you paid the ultimate price. You died for our sins. You were buried. You rose again the third day for our justification. And we thank you for it. So understanding that's what we should do. As we move on, meditate. The Bible talks about how David meditated. Get off to your quiet place sometime. I like the movie called The Prayer Room. I mean, was it The Prayer Room or The War Room? It's The War Room, I'm sorry. And me and my wife, we sat and watched it. It was good, it was a great show. And I gotta be honest with you, I'm kinda iffy when it comes to kinda biblical type movies because I think they fabricate the truth, some of them. So I sat down and I can honestly, honestly say that's a good movie. So if you haven't seen it, the war room is real good. But you got to get off to yourself and meditate. For well, Psalms 1914, it reads, let the words of our mouth, of my mouth, and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. So get off sometime. Cut off the TV. Put your cell phones in your book bag. Get off to a quiet place. Put on your aromatherapy. And just meditate on God for five minutes. Relax your brain and let God talk to you. Let him direct you. Let him lead you. Let him guide you. And he will do that. And last but not least, you definitely want to have an active life and active relationship with God when you go to church. Now, I'm not saying you need to go to church seven days a week. I'm not saying that you need to go to church three times a day, except for seven days a week. But we definitely want to assemble ourselves with other believers. So I like how it says in Psalms 122.1, when David spoke, David said, I was glad when they said to me, let us go into the house of the Lord. So we ought to be joyful. We ought to be glad. And Hebrews chapter 10, verse 24 through 25 reads, and let us consider one another to provoke, to provoke unto love and to good works not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another, and so much the more as ye see the day approaching. So Paul says, I mean Hebrews, I'm sorry, says forsake not the assembling yourself together with other believers. They're telling us to assemble with believers, that we may be exhorted, that, may, that they may provoke us in love, that they may encourage us, that they may inspire us as believers when, when, we da- when we're down. Because guess what? Sometimes we're not going to always be happy. I believe it was David said sometimes he had to think himself happy. But understand that that's why we go to church. You're not going to find no perfect people there. If you're going there for perfect people, then you might as well don't go because they're not there and you won't find them. Because if they was perfect, we would have never needed a Savior. If we was perfect, perfect, Christ would have never had to leave heaven's glory to come down and save sinful men. But we go to assemble ourselves, that we could be encouraged, that we could be inspired, and that we could be motivated by someone or somebody. So these are the words I have for you today. Have an active prayer life. Meditate on God. Read the word of God for yourself and forsake not the assembly, you're assembling yourself with other believers. So as we close out, I'm going to pray. And we thank God as always for his unmerited, undeserving favor called grace. For grace is the total absence of any works. You can't work for grace. You can't buy grace. You can't sell it. It is simply what God has given to each and every one of us. Because we believe that Christ died for our sins. He was buried and that he rose, like, rose again the third day for our justification. So I thank you for tuning in. And we're going to close with prayer. And I just thank God for your time and your patience and just for you tuning in and listening to me today when you could have been doing something else. Father God, we thank you for today. 
We thank you for your the body of Christ and the believers. We ask as they go forward today that you bless each and every individual. We ask that you guide them. We ask that you direct them, God. For whatever situation they're going through, God, you're just and you're faithful enough to bring us out of it all. And Lord, we thank you. We thank you for your finished works on the cross. We thank you for all the things that you do and all the things that you continue to do. Bless your people. Continue to teach us to love as you loved us. Continue to help us to hope when we have no hope. Continue to believe in us when we don't believe in ourselves. On behalf of myself and my wife, Melissa Lee Farmer Hill, be blessed.